Greetings, Geog 5 students. This is your instructor, and I wanted to talk a little bit about week two and some assignments uh, that are coming up. You want to be sure to be checking your announcements area of the web page for things that are going on. I sent an announcement out today about some things going on this week and a little bit of clarification with respect to identifying due dates and so forth, some of which you see on the right-hand side of the screen. You'll have two lectures this week. The first is posted out there on geographic representation. And also there is an article for your review. So if you go out to the modules area, you'll see week two. And here is the article three that you're going to be uh, reviewing. So click on this, you'll be able to access the article from there as well. And this will give you the link to the article and also the uh, review questions that you're going to respond to due by Saturday. Again, it, that is a <clears throat> 10 point assignments so under modules and also under assignments you'll see that so there it is in addition you have a 50 point assignment the first of three which is due uh, a week from sunday so i'll give you an, an extra day uh, well i guess we're looking at a little under two weeks for the completion of this assignment and this is what i wanted to focus our attention on today and so what you're going to find under this is a basic introduction and then a detailed instruction. And if I bring up the assignment, you'll see something that looks like this, the detailed outline. And among the things that you'll find in here is a list of outcomes and concepts. And you'll want to read through these concepts and cross-reference them to the uh, lectures this week, since a number of the questions pertain specifically to terms that are shown in uh, this list of, of concepts. Uh, also looking at uh, some of the methods that we're using, uh, some of the outcomes or applications that we're hoping for you to gain as a result of this activity. And so there's a number of assignments that are uh, particular maps that you're going to look at, particular historic maps. And we're going to be using three websites or applications, namely the David Rumsey Map Collection, Google Maps, and Google Earth. And so today I wanted to focus a little bit of attention on using those different utilities. And so I'm going to start off by talking about the Rumsey Collection. And this is a fantastic resource. And uh, there's a number of different ways that you can utilize this. I prefer to uh, focus on the use of the Luna browser. So under this View Collection menu, you can choose uh, the Luna browser. You can launch the Luna browser. And this gives you uh, some choice maps to start with, some choice documents to start with. And then you can search on any particular place in the world that you may be interested in. And you will find maps related to that. And once you launch one of these maps, what you'll find is that you have, uh, th these are static maps, but you do have a zoom utility and this zoom utility will allow you to zoom to different scales on the map. And then you've got a way to pan around down here in the corner so that you can examine the contents of these maps. And again, the intent here is to show you some of the changes that have taken place over time. So for example, on this map of the Golden Gate, you'll notice there's no Golden Gate Bridge. And also in the different methods that have changed over time with respect to how we represent topography or other features on the landscape. So that's the Rumsey collection. And one of the nice things that you can do with the Rumsey collection as well is you can launch the Rumsey collection into Google Earth. 
And so they give you an option to do it within your web browser or through the Google Earth application. And I prefer to use the Google Earth application. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And you will have to have Google Earth installed on your computer to be able to do this. And once you've done so, you should see something that looks like and get it to come up on the screen here. There it is. So here's Google Earth. And we now have embedded within Google Earth the Rumsey collection. And let me uh, start off by uh, just giving you a little bit of an orientation to Google Earth for those folks that may be new to Google Earth. What you'll find when you launch this, and again, this is a free application, but it, it does require that it's installed on the computer that you're working on. It's installed in a variety of locations on the campus. And of course, it's free to download for your own installation. And so you'll see that there are areas for places. There's a search window and there are also layers. And so what you'll find is See if I can get this thing to refresh. I'm going to back out a little bit to refresh our view a little bit here. Seems to be getting a little bit of a. Uh, I think I'm picking up the uh, the Rumsey collection here still. Let me zoom back to my database. So these are the default layers that it includes, and so I frequently will turn off some of these overlying images. Oh, it's interesting. Something is acting a little odd here. I think I'm still seeing the panels from the Rumsey collection. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, exit out of Google Earth. Let's say discard. Let's go ahead and launch the application again. It didn't appear to be playing nice. Okay, so there's kind of your standard view. I'm going to go ahead and turn off these. There we go. So now we have a little more of a standard view. It's defaulting to include roads. So if I zoom in, we'll start to see the roads appear, but I can turn those off. Similarly, places, uh, photos, you know, if you start turning all these things on, you get to a point where things start looking really cluttered. And so I frequently will turn them off, um, although um, you'll at times realize that your view is not giving you what you want if you don't uh, have some of these underlying layers uh, turned on. All right, so we have our, our basic imagery. And then under My Places, these are the things that you are uh, have either created for yourself, so some that I've created here, or some canned Version. So, for example, there's a tectonic earthquakes and volcanoes um, layer called a KNZ file that's been created. And in addition, you can open things such as the Rumsey Historic Map Collection. And so, if I'm interested in New York City in 1782, I can search to New York. and it will overlay this map on top of contemporary imagery. Now, this is a case where the 3D buildings are cluttering our image. And so, for starters, let's just show you what the 3D buildings look like. And this is especially interesting for New York. If you zoom in on New York, you'll see that these renderings of the buildings come into effect. And if you press down on the mouse button and you rotate your perspective, so I'm just holding my mouse button down and pulling back, now I can actually see the skyline of New York, uh, including one World Trade Center where the uh, Twin Towers used to reside, one of the newest buildings on the New York skyline. Now, if I turn this off and rotate myself back into the bird's eye perspective, and then I turn back on the Rumsey collection, okay, there we go. And so 
this gives us an opportunity now to be able to view what this area looked like historically. Fascinating to imagine New York as a place that had topography and uh, farmlands and other things back in the day. Again, you can turn this off and view the contemporary image. And uh, similar, similarly, if you're dealing with a more mountainous area, you have the ability to view not only your historic imagery, but also to be able to view this landscape in a 3D perspective. And again, you can see actually in this case, things look like they're sort of flattened out a little bit here. I think if I turn on my 3D buildings, or maybe not, let's see if we can get a three-dimensional topographic view here. Ah, that's the problem. I turned off my terrain. Go back to where we were. Sorry about this. this you, uh, at times you feel like you're uh, crashing the uh, the plane. So I had had my terrain turned off, which is why I wasn't seeing the three-dimensional rendering. But again, here's the Rocky Mountains shown in this three-dimensional view. And if I rotate my perspective and back out, I'll get the bird's eye view again. And once again, I can choose to turn on. Again, there are lots and lots of historic maps that you can look at. Uh, I'll turn on the 1827 map of the Rocky Mountains overlaid on the existing imagery within Google Earth. One of the things that you'll be doing in this exercise, there's two things you'll utilize. One is the historic time slider of imagery. And so in this case, we can go back to 1988, see what the landscape looked like. And then you can just scroll your way through different imagery. So that's one of the things you'll look at. And another feature that you'll use is what we call street view. And we get to a place with some streets. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and turn off that historic map. Looks like it's still up on my screen. My computer interface seems to be running quite slowly here. I apologize for the slow response time. This is your street view, and I'm thinking that it may end up dropping me into There we go. <laughs> Sorry for the uh, uneven running of this, but here we go. We're now in Denver and we're in this street view and we can kind of rotate our view around. You can see up here it says exit street view. That's how you get back to your other view. And you can rotate your view along. This is a contemporary view of the location. You can see the street lines appearing and uh, really kind of a neat feature. This is what is produced by the Google car that has a camera mounted on the top of it. Sometimes you can see a shadow of the Google car appearing on the image from where these are taken. You can see they're wiping out the license plates. All right, well, I'm running out of time here. I have a 15 minute limit on this, but I did want to show you very briefly Google Maps. And when you're in Google Maps, you have the option to change not only to imagery, but also to a terrain view. And you'll be using this because the terrain view gives you a wonderful representation of the natural landscape. Uh, and this is one of the themes or the features that we're using in this part of the course. All right, well, let me know if you have questions and enjoy your browsing.